The Atmega series through 8 to 328 have the same pinout, uh, which means that if you've got a project in mind that uh, requires a lot of pins, but perhaps doesn't require the full grunt of a 328, something like an Atmega 8 is a good alternative, and it's around half the price. At the moment, that's around a dollar a chip as opposed to around two dollars a chip. So quite a saving. Comparing them side by side, uh, 28 pins each, and you can see that uh, the obvious difference is that the Atmega 8A has around 8K of memory, and the 328 has four times that at 32K. There's also a difference in the amount of SRAM available, and also the EEPROM. Everything else, pretty much the same. So uh, I do have a project which I've got in mind involving a reflow oven. Uh, so I just took delivery recently of this AVR ISP shield and um, you just lock the chips into the ZIF uh, adapter and set it on top of uh, an Arduino Uno and uh, theoretically we should be able to program it. Just to give you an idea of what that's uh, worth, those things come into uh, Australia anyway for about $3 a hit, so very cheap option. Uh, so let's see if we can't press it into action. First thing to do is to load up the Arduino Uno uh, with a program which is called Arduino ISP. So to do that, you simply go to the file and examples and one of the examples down at the bottom there, so you see number 11 is Arduino ISP. So load that one up. Then have your Arduino Uno connected to USB. And the program is AVR ISP. And then you simply load it up. So that's it compiling and uploading. And uh, We'll just have a bit of an action shot here to see what that looks like. It's um, not very exciting, but you'll see the lights blink on the uh, on the left-hand side there on the Uno. And then what we do is we fit that shield over the top of the Uno. And there I've got the Atmega 8A loaded up, and you can see the orientation there. Uh, and then the Atmega 328 is, is the same. So this is the program that I've, I'm just going to use to test. So basically in the end I'm going to be using a seven segment display with um, four positions there just to measure temperature. So I've got that uh, program up and running. It's just going to count actually at this, at this stage, so it's not measuring anything. And there's my 328 options. And uh, I'm just going to firstly burn the bootloader. So that's an internal 8 megahertz bootloader and then we compile and upload the sketch via that AVR ISP shield directly to the chip and that's pretty much it now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over from the Atmega 328 I'm not changing the code at all but I'm going to switch over to the 8A and again, I'm just going to make sure that the clock is the internal. And everything else pretty much remains the same. I'll change the bootloader to no. And that's good. Now, I'm just going to actually physically pull the chip out at this stage. There's a bit of a delay. Pull the 328 out of the ZIF socket and put the 8A in and lock that in place and then I can go up and just burn that bootloader as well as compile it so now the only thing that remains is to um, to see what that compiling looks like live so there it is sitting on the top I think that's the that's the 8A, so there that code is loaded up, that's fine. And then we just need to see it running. I won't run it with both chips, I think that's the 328 
P sitting out there. It's just been in and it's working fine. That's the 8A sitting in position with the seven segment display there, just counting every quarter of a second. And then I can just simply swap the three to eight in there and it, it does the same thing. So proof of concept, those uh, both those chips work, but the 8A is the cheaper one. And that's the one that I'm going to base the reflow oven around. So the idea is that I will measure the temperature and I will get the 8A uh, to display that and then hopefully be able to use that, uh, that oven to build, among other things, the uh, the troublesome free PDK Paduk programmer. But that's the circuit working. So uh, next time uh, I return with this particular project, we should have it hooked up to the thermocouple and, uh, and the oven, and we'll be able to see some live temperature measurements and hopefully some control. See you then.